Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're back again with our Spotlight series. And this time, it's a very, very special project where I have so many wonderful friends. And uh, let's start with the introduction first. And we can get into getting to know more about the manifesto or threat modeling manifesto. So we'll start with you, Avi. Hey everyone, I'm Avi Duglin. I'm currently the chair of the OS Global Board of Directors and in my day job, I'm a consultant. Kim? Hi, I'm Kim Watts. I am a manager of uh, cyber and privacy at uh, one of the big four. And before doing that, I was a researcher and I did a lot of research on privacy engineering and threat modeling and, um, well, privacy threat modeling as the overall uh, deal there and over to you Izer. Izer, i have done a few episodes with you and they have been the most special ones <laughs> thank you <laughs> so yeah uh Izar Tarandas. uh this week i am a senior principal security architect somewhere and uh i like big threat models Cannot lie. lie. <laughs> Cannot lie. <laughs> right. So we really wanted to know about threat modeling manifesto, and uh, the reason behind is that a, a lot of organizations have now started picking up threat modeling as a big thing, which should have been done a very long time back. <laughs> so let's understand that how exactly uh, they can pick up threat modeling manifesto and start implementing in the organization, and at the same time they start supporting such initiatives. I'll, I'll, I'll let the chairman start. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. So <laughs> for a long time, you know, we introduced the manifesto, was it three, four years ago already? And I, yeah, when I, when I talk about the manifesto, I, I say it serves two really good purposes. If you are not familiar with, with what threat modeling is, you know, heard, heard this cool thing, then it gives you a really grounded, very basic introduction of what threat modeling is and where to go from there. On the other hand, if you have been doing threat modeling a long time, but you have no idea if you've been doing a good job on that, because there's a lot of ways to do threat modeling. Some of them are great, some of them not so great. The manifesto kind of sets that baseline of what good threat modeling should look like. And that's what the manifesto is really there for. Yeah, yeah. What he said. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think indeed, but it, it gives you a flavor of what it is. Um, but it's so much more. And even if you're already like um, a threat model or modeling expert, you can still find new things that you can apply to make it even better. Um, I think that one of the important things that manifesto brings is that uh, some people they for all the popularity of the term threat modeling and stuff a lot of people they have a bit of a fear of jumping into that it's too big it's too complicated it's too complex uh, you have to be a, a, a specialist you have to know everything there is to know about security before you embark into it and i find that the manifesto is a great way to take that initial fear out of people because we, we sort of address a lot of the pain points that we have identified of, over the years whenever people start doing threat modeling or whenever they, they jump a level in their threat modeling journey. So we look at anti-patterns like the uh, the hero uh, threat modeler, which now is a completely different thing coming the, the, the last year. But uh, things like the uh, analysis paralysis, uh, don't get stuck in the white page, just start doing it and start improving on it, right? We, we address the fact that it's an evolutionary process. It's not a, a one and done and see you next year. And uh, we, we have to talk a, a bit about how it came together, right? So if you look at uh, uh, the three of us here, there's a lot of shared background, but there's also a lot of, uh, I won't call it diversity, but uh, non-commonality, let's put it like this. If you add the other 12 or 13 people who, who worked with us in, in this effort, I think that you're going to see that we really spread a huge, huge, huge swath of uh, the community of practitioners out there. Yeah. So there was a lot of different opinions coming in. There was a different uh, approaches 
and um, you know it's all reflected in there so it's not one mindset it's not uh, uh, one person in a group saying uh, this is what it is and everybody agrees with them there was a lot of discussion if you if you've seen the application uh, security podcast i think that uh, chris had two episodes with the background of uh, the whole process i find it extremely interesting because again it's a diverse group a lot of opinionated uh, people a lot of uh, strong opinions and still we managed to get to some consensus and oh, almost yeah. no fighting yeah almost oh. no fighting um <laughs> and yeah we we explicitly stepped away from method specific approaches or whatever we 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 wanted to go to a more higher more abstract level um to to come to the essential parts and not saying well you need to do it in the way of method X or method Y, because there's so many methods and it's not a one size fits all solution. I, I think one, many of our patterns and principles and um, what was the terms we used say that explicitly, like um, make sure that it aligns to to um, the stakeholders needs and, and, and you cannot do that with one specific method necessarily. Right. Yeah. So how frequently are we updating this manifesto? So the interesting thing, if, if I can jump in, uh, John, um, following what you said, <laughs> you might even say we modeled threat modeling, and that model doesn't actually need to change often. You know, we might, you know, fine tune our thinking over time or, you know, six years down the line, we might not be so comfortable, with it, but it's not something that needs to consist constantly evolve because it's very generic. It's very abstract of what threat modeling is. It's kind of an expectation of you know what you should be expecting when you get into threat modeling. That said, it doesn't actually give any practical guidance, which does need to change over time. Yeah. And that's where the capabilities come in. So uh, for, for your listeners to know, we released the manifesto several years ago. Several months ago, we, we actually finished working on the capabilities um, which is kind of linked off of the manifesto, which does give specific guidance or rather, well, capabilities, specific issues that need to be solved. It's not so much how to solve this or how to implement that, but it is these are the things that you need to have done to have a good practice overall. Not a single threat model in place, but to have a consistent, sustainable, viable practice over time. And it's not a maturity document. Very important to say, this is not a maturity document. <laughs> How can people um, pick it up and start implementing from the very basic when they look at the manifesto? That, that's the thing. I don't think that a manifesto is something that you implement. I think that much like the, uh, the Zen of Python or uh, the, the Ten Commandments of C or things uh, that became foundational in terms of putting people in the right mindset to do what they set out to do, right? So I would say if you are starting your threat modeling practice, then definitely take a look at it just as, I won't say a North Star, but uh, sort of looking ahead on what's coming, right? The the, the places where we stumbled with the anti-patterns, the, the things that helped with the patterns, the values of threat modeling, meaning these are the things that you should be looking for going forward. But I, I don't think that there's a specific, this is the moment in the timeline where you pick it up and you immediately get something and you run with it. It's, it's, it's a mindset, it's a context. Yeah, I, I love the word mindset. I, I think it's more something that will help you overcome the pitfalls of uh, threat modeling rather than teach you how to get started. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So if somebody thinks that they want to contribute to the manifesto, how can they do that? You know, that's an interesting question. <laughs> we, we, I don't think that we have a process exactly. It's not on, on GitHub. You're not going to submit PRs. But it has been done. It has yeah, been done. It has been done. But uh, we, we, we lurk on uh, Slack, on the, the, the OASP Slack, most of us. So uh, the, the Threat Modern channel is a very lively place of very nice discussions. But with that said, it's not set in stone, you know? As soon as somebody says, right. hey, this is missing or this is wrong, we will be more than happy 
to, to engage and, and make changes. But we're not really expecting to make a lot of changes to the manifesto. It's kind of so aspirational. It's so abstract that yeah. it's not like, oh, there's a new technique. Oh, we need to adapt this to AI. It it's, covers that as well. The capabilities is something that I think we will be seeing iterations over time. Right. I think we are also looking forward to the same and uh, it has been very helpful and I'm sure it will help a lot of people to change the mindset around threat modeling. So it's very, very important. Yeah, I, I think that w w one thing that uh, one uh, anecdote that can be told here is uh, a Jim Manico that we all like and respect a lot. Right. He used to not be a very big fan of threat modeling for reasons of his own. <laughs> and. I think that the uh, last con 2022 or something, he was keynoting and he was giving a, a brief history of application security with a timeline and everything. And Chris Romeo and I were sitting in the back of the room. And at some point he got to threat modeling and we were like, okay, Germanico, threat modeling doesn't like it, fine. And then he says, and then the threat modeling manifesto jumped in and uh, something like changed the way that I saw threat modeling. And Chris looked at me and looked at him like, did you, did you hear what he said? And it's, did you hear what he said? Did he, did he just say that? So that, that to me was a bit of a turning point uh, marked by the Threat Modeling Manifesto that if we manage to convert somebody like Jim, then uh, I think that we did something worth of uh, uh, reading at least once. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's very important because um, there are people who don't understand that how much threat modeling is important when we talk about the industry and especially the applications so when we change the mindset of one person and especially people like jim manico who was actually very influential in an application security it changes mindset for so many people around so yep. it totally helps yeah exactly so the, yeah i mean i'm repeating what they have been saying all all <laughs> all the time but it's it's exactly as they said um now i forgot um <laughs> damn it <laughs> um i blame it on you isar no uh, <laughs> um so so threat modeling is often used as kind of a buzzword or or something that people don't really grasp or think like it's like a five minute thing and we can check the box that we've done something but it really provides the manifesto, the capabilities provide that provide that frame and explain that it's more than that, and it's it's a real approach that needs a lot of um, well that that you can really um, mature and that you can really integrate and that can have a lot of value and that's not just that buzzword that ha that's been used from time to time. And that's really what it comes down to, though, right? It doesn't matter the specific techniques you use. What matters is that you stop to think about security. Is there when you? I think had, you, Jim was on your podcast, right? The AppSec table. Yes. And he, he actually had really good reasons to be opposed yes. to threat modeling. The thing that I disagree with him is calling what he's opposed to threat modeling, right? Uh, because he's opposed to all these, you know, very rigorous and very consultant-driven and very standardized formats you have to fill out you know checkbox exercises and he says screw all that i don't want people doing that threat modeling i want people to just stop and think give them a structured framework to think about the, the security issues in the product and and you uh is are you and everybody else that's what we call threat modeling that's exactly that he he was a bit uh i won't say dated but he was a bit orthodox in the way that he approached it before yes but a lot of people still do still do that true and true, true, true. Threat which is what he's what he's against. I, I think that unfortunately we 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 suffer from a lot of uh, um, things being set in time in threat modeling. I think that people go and and they hear that they have to do threat modeling. They Google, get the first thing that they find, which usually is one single article written in 2018, right? Which lists some forms of threat modeling. And that became sort of like, this is all that threat modeling is. In the past three years, four years, uh, it, all of us in here have been publishing about threat modeling, talking about threat modeling, screaming about it with threat modeling, right? And in some cases, moving the, the, the needle forward in the ways that threat modeling are done, is done. 
And uh, unfortunately, some people are still stuck into the big process in the sky. This only works in waterfall environments. And you have to create these huge documents. And you have to have uh, almost a, a, an insurer's mind to risk management and this and, and that, that and all the other ones. When at the end of the day, and we put that very clearly in the in the manifesto, it comes down to four questions. It's Adam Shostak's framework. You ask those questions. If you're able to answer them, ta-da, you got a threat model, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the one of the funniest things with the manifesto was that in the period that we were writing it, at some point we noticed that we did not have a definition for what threat modeling is. And let me tell you what, to come up with that one sentence, it took a lot of discussion and a lot of back and forth, right? And at the end, I think that we settled for, what is it? Threat modeling is analyzing representations of a system to highlight concerns about security and privacy characteristics. Now, the nice thing is that if you see the presentations of each one of the authors of the manifesto, after the manifesto, almost none of, none of us says, this is the definition. We say, this is one definition. I have my own, but this is the one that I use because we all agreed that this is the definition, right? But we all supplement it with our own. And I think that another thing that, uh, that that's very important, and here Kim uh, shines with her uh, uh, part in it, is that we brought security and privacy to the same level. We are not talking security, the the the, and privacy. Now it's one breath: security and privacy. And threat modeling is looking at it and saying, you know, this is basically the best place where we can look at both things together and see how one needs the other, or how how one adds to the other. So, yeah, another thing that I'm very happy about in the festival. And now I'm going to shut up. I've been talking too much. What I find interesting about that, Isar, is that, you know, as you said, we all have our own definitions, but they're kind of a specific subset of that abstract definition that we have in the manifesto. It's taking that in a specific direction that is useful for however you do threat modeling, however you want to talk about it. And that's really what threat modeling is, thinking about it in a specific way predefined way. I think that's what it makes it different than other modules that we have, because it's neutral and it can be picked up by anyone and it changes the mindset. So it's really, really helpful. And I'm glad that I could connect with all of you and get your inputs around it. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are looking for such details, but they don't know much about it. So I'm sure this discussion will help them a lot. And I will add all the links that you shared during the session for the people to look after. And I can see in the threat modeling manifesto itself, you've added amazing resources, which people should definitely look at it, whether it's about um, it's threat modeling diversity by Brooke uh, Schoenfeld uh, or uh, the two podcasts that you're talking about by Chris. And even everything that's there, but articles by Kim uh, or Derek or Robert or anyone. So it's totally amazing. Yeah. And, and to come back to the question you asked earlier, Vandana, about so how can people use it if they want to get started? I want to do some PR for Isar and Matt's book because I think that's like <laughs> the place to get started when you want to do threat modeling. It's like my go to. Yes, exactly. There. <laughs> Where is it? It's here somewhere. Where is it? It's this awesome book um, that's blurred now. Now in Korean as well. Yo, <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I think this is totally amazing. Uh, this is the kind of information that people need uh, when we talk about um, uh, threat modeling and how to get into it. What are the things that they should actually look after? So thank you so much for sharing such wonderful details and being on the episode with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much.